There's been a little confusion about the term table slappers, a phrase that I coined in my previous reviews. You know what this is? You guessed it. And it got people, including myself, wondering how do I quantify what a table slapper is? So there's a few rules for me when I think about if a game is a table slapper. One, it can't be a card or small box game because, number two, it has to have a somewhat impressive table presence, something that looks cool. Three, you have to be able to teach this game fairly quickly. And four, it's gotta have a runtime of around an hour or less. So to remove some of the nebulous ideas surrounding what table slappers are, here are 10 table slappers from my collection. And this is in no particular order. We're gonna take a look at 10 and I'm gonna say this is a table slapper, starting with... Shoot. Starting with Imhotep. Imhotep is a fairly straightforward game where you are using blocks to build one of the wonders in Egypt. It's a game that offers you simple decisions, it looks awesome on the table, and you can teach it very quickly. Next up on the list we have... New York Slice, a game about serving up pizza. In this game, you set a pizza in front of you and on your turn, you divvy it up and you pick last. So it's that whole I split, you pick idea and you're just trying to score as many points as possible. So when you make the decision of how to cut that pizza, you go in understanding that you pick last. All right. Slide Quest, a really interesting game from Blue Orange Games that if you see someone playing it, you kind of want to stop and watch because it's the video game board game in that it's exciting. I mean, it's a dexterity game. There's a number of dexterity games that you could put onto a table slapper list. And this in particular is one of them. You go through a number of obstacles and work together to slide your knight into the correct section of the board. Really easy to understand once you get it up and running and really fun to play. We'll stick with the dexterity theme for the next one. Ice Cool. Ice Cool is a game that uses the box itself and creates sort of this tag idea. You are running around a school trying to avoid the hall monitor and get the fish that you can. I mean, it is, it has a table presence, the way that it spreads out, the way that you play, easy to understand, easy to explain, and just a blast. Yeah, you know what, we'll keep on it with the dexterity games. Mars Open. Mars Open is golf on the table. Plain and simple. It's essentially a tabletop version of Frisbee golf, except with instead of Frisbees, you are flicking little paper discs. That's it. That's, I mean, that's, a, it's almost a quintessential table slapper in that that's the game. What you see is what you get, but it has a variety in how you can set everything up. Looks cool and it can play it a, a number of players, but it's not something I would consider a party game. Uh, Cursed Court is fantastic because it is one of those games that has sort of an addictive nature almost. It feels like you're playing poker or roulette. You use different, uh, you use information to try to figure out which area of the board you want to control and you have shared information with the people next to you and you just play a number of rounds until whoever has the most points wins. Let's get relaxed because Seikatsu is a table slapper in my book. Seikatsu is a game where you place these pretty looking tiles onto a board and you're trying to match birds into a section. You're trying to get rows of flowers you're given simple decisions on a beautiful board in an engrossing and interesting game that isn't that hard to pick up and it doesn't take very long to play and it's one that I always enjoy. Now, there are a ton of roll and write games, games where you roll dice and write on a sheet of paper or flip a card, write on a sheet of paper or a board that I could include in this game. But because of my small box restriction, I was, I couldn't, except for, on tour because BoardGameTables.com did not mess around when they were doing this and they really amped up the production in this. And while the gameplay is simple, you roll dice and choose from three cards available to you on where you're going to place a number on your board. It's a map, you are a band trying to chart out where exactly your band is going to tour in the United States. Cool theme, fantastic components and can play a whole number of people or it can play one player. Um, we're going to go Camel Up here. Camel Up is absolutely a table slapper. Um, it's a, and it has been for a long time. Camel Up has been around for a while and there's this new uh, addition that's arguably makes it even more of a table slapper with upgraded components, a pop-up on the board. And it's essentially a game where you sit there and try to figure out which camel's going to come in first, last, which one's going to be ahead during a round. And it's hectic and it's crazy and it's fun and it's quick and you understand it when you set it up and play. 
That puts us at nine, so let's go with number 10, Santorini. Santorini is a game where you build up buildings in the island of Santorini. Uh, essentially, it's just a abstract game where you mo you're moving pieces around trying to be the first one at the top of a building. Oh, there's a big spider on my wall. You're trying to be the first player to have one of your pieces at the top of a three-story building, and all the other pieces can block people off. You can make it a little more complicated by adding in special power cards, or keep it simple by leaving those out. Now, I hope me pulling 10 Table Slapper games out of my collection to show you sort of clears up some of the mystery around the term, and maybe you can start using it yourself. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow me on my other social media accounts. If you'd like, you can support me on Coffee. Um, but we will see you next time. Thank you so much and have a great day.